Call to order the meeting of the Hereford Township Zoning Hearing Board of Thursday, December 1st, 2022. Present at the front table to my far left is Jessica Vitale, a voting member. Good evening. Next to Jess, Jessica is Ed McGargy, a voting member. Okay. My left, Ernie Angelos, our solicitor. Good evening. My right, Bill Rhodes, a voting member. Good evening. Next to Bill is Jesse Poynton, a voting member. Good evening. My far right, Kelly Kirk, code enforcement officer. <laughs> For Hanford Township and Margie Buchanan, also from the codes. Uh, we have one new case, one continued case on the agenda tonight. And before we begin, do you want to lead us in the pledge? Sure. Please rise if you can. 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 Please rise all right. <laughs> the continued case is Z22-28, James Miller, equitable owner of 2228 Haverford Road, Ardmore, PA, DC folio number 2206-016702, who seeks a special exception to construct a second floor addition, which, is, which does not increase the footprint of the building, to allow for offices to serve the existing uses as the natural expansion of a pre-existing non-conforming use pursuant to section 182803B2 to establish Miller's roofing business as the new tenant of the indoor garage <coughs> or strike sorry about that already. The new tenant of the indoor storage buildings, warehouse use currently existing, pursuant to section 182503B1E. And if necessary, a variance pursuant to section 182207B1. And if necessary, authorization to make changes to the existing structure to replace a large lobby slash waiting area on the first lot, which is no longer in use with a new repair bed. And the existing auto repair shop pursuant to section 182802B2. The property is on R5 and located in the sixth ward. Welcome. How are you? Good evening. How are you? My name's Carl Ewald, and I'm here representing Jim Miller Holdings, uh, which is the equitable owner of 2228 Haverford Road. Uh, many of you may be familiar with Jim Miller already. Uh, his business has been a longtime fixture in the Haverford Township community, uh, and uh, his business is actually currently headquartered here uh, on Haverford Road. 2228 Haverford is a strange and unique parcel. Uh, the, at first glance, I mean, it's easy to see that it's this weird pie shape, uh, but then when you dig deeper uh, and you look at the legal constraints on the property, it's actually two parcels uh, with a dividing line that zigzags through an existing building. And uh, I've provided a bunch of exhibits uh, for the board. I actually want to add one more exhibit to that, which is just a silhouette of what the two parcels actually look like. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen uh, parcels that are designed this way before. As you may remember, it's been commercial uh, for many decades. Uh, the property is actually zoned residential under your current zoning map, uh, but at one point it was a, uh, a gas station with a uh, um, service station use. Uh, the gas station has been gone for a long time. Uh, it's primarily been uh, an auto repair use uh, for, for the last several decades. Uh, the first the front parcel here uh, is all auto repair use. And then this back parcel has a mixture. Uh, it, it's, it serves both the auto repair use. And it's also been rented out to a couple of tenants who use it to store their equipment. Uh, they use it to store uh, a vehicle. You might have seen the snap-on tools truck parked in the storage lot uh, and, and their merchandise. And what exhibit number is that that's on the board? That's the site plan. Uh, that would be exhibit number two. Okay. So 
Today we're here asking for three things. Primarily, we're asking for approval to expand the pre-existing non-conforming use to add a second floor addition. Pursuant to section 182.803.B2, non-conforming uses or structures may be expanded if they're immediately in the immediately adjacent to the existing non-conforming use and up to 50% of the area and of the lot and the floor area for the of the existing non-conformity. Here, the, the proposed expansion doesn't increase the for, footprint in any way. The, the entire expansion is proposed to go on top of primarily of, of this second lot, um, you know, with this weird lot line there. It, 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 it's on top of the first lot a little bit as well. The, uh, the expansion um, is designed to add to what is already uh, an existing office space that's on the second floor uh, and expand that uh, to allow this use uh, to continue here. The um, second thing that we're requesting is that the warehouse use um, or, or, or the use in that second lot be converted to the, the uh, shop for Miller Roofing. So, just the ground floor, you mean, of that? Well, so, yeah, the, the ground floor would be the shop area where, or, you know, um, well, the whole thing would be a, a, a roofer's, you know, contractor's shop, but the, uh, the ground floor would be warehousing, um, storage, uh, it's, it's got a bay door so they could move a truck in and out of it. Um, and I have Jim Miller here to testify in more, in more detail as to what the intended uses are. Uh, and then the, um, the offices for the, the roofing business would be on the second floor. Uh, that is, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know I, honestly, I'm not sure if that even requires relief. Um, you know, it's currently being used for storage, um, you know, but the, uh, the code allows you to shift a, a non-existing, a non-conforming pre-existing use uh, from one in the same category to another. And uh, the use that you have there now, they all fit under the light industrial district, uh, section 182-503. Um, Currently, the two uses that you have there is the automobile repair shop, uh, which is L, subsection L, under the use regulations of uses permitted by right um, in the LIN district. Uh, you also uh, have indoor storage buildings, warehousing, uh, which is subsection E, uh, to, to allow for a contractor's shop, which includes lumber, millwork, carpentry, carpet, cabinet making, furniture repair, light metalworking, electrical, plumbing, and then it specifically lists roofing or other similar shops, that's subsection K. So uh, under your zoning ordinance, uh, it is permitted to shift between uh, non-conforming non uses, which are of the same category. And then the last thing that we requested, uh, I actually, uh, I believe that the township agrees that we're, we're permitted to do uh, without relief, but that is, um, if you look at the facade of ha um, Haverford. All right. Wow, good catch. <laughs> Maybe I'll just use the computer version. <laughs> so um, this facade here that uh, currently has two bay doors and then it has, this, it has a lobby and um, historically, that was fairly common in, a, in, a, in an auto repair business. People would come in, they'd, draw, they'd, they'd bring their car, they'd sit in the lobby and wait while they got an oil change or, or, or whatever. Nowadays, with Uber and, you know, and all the other uh, amenities that are available, people just drop their car and they leave, and, and that, that uh, lobby area is completely useless. So they want to... Uh, shift that section of the building to add another bay uh, and, and take away the lobby. 
that doesn't include any changes to the to the use. That doesn't include any changes to the exterior of the property besides the door. Uh, so I believe that the township uh, agrees that that does not require relief. But if it does, we're requesting relief. And that's Exhibit A6. Is that correct, Carl? Uh, yes. And, and for the record, could you clarify which which garage doors exist and which ones and which one is proposed? So if you go left to right, one, two, three, one and two currently exist, and number three does not exist currently. And we do have um, a couple of photographs that show, or a couple of pictures that show the existing uh, conditions. <laughs> so if you're on Haverford, uh, this is what it currently looks like. You've got the two bay doors and this here is the lobby for the building. And you can see or you, um, you know you can see how there's a big difference in what's existing and what's proposed. Yeah, there's a, a stucco siding. Uh, it's painted a faded Pepto-Bismol color. Um, and it's, it's deteriorated. Mr. Ewald, well, I apologize. Is there a particular exhibit in the packet that, you were point, that you're pointing to as we go through this for the record? Sorry. Uh, that would be uh, A3. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and th this is the view from um, Paracom. Uh, you know, you've got the, the original building that's in that stuff with the with, you know, Pepto-Bismol view, and then you've got um, a, this is the you know, warehouse, uh, and here you can see there's an existing office space on the second floor, small office space. Here's the storage yard that's existing. Um, that's probably inside. Oh, the in this uh, page that you're looking at, which is page two of exhibit A3, um, the existing garage door that we see there, that's a full straight pass through to the other side of the building, is that correct? No. No, so the north elevation of this building has an exist as a fourth existing garage door bay. Correct. And they don't, but it doesn't pass through. Correct, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit funny the way it works. Um, to the computer. <coughs> um, if you look at the site plan, um, which is uh, A2, um, this, this section here um, that kind of comes off, out off the back of the original building, the bay door is, is here off that north wall. Right, but... It looks like it would line up, but it doesn't. It doesn't, no. Like, the, I, I imagine that this is an addition off the original building, and this was the original back wall here. So there is a party wall here, uh, and you could not drive a car through there. There is a, there's a door that you could have a person go through, but that's it. Yeah, that's A2. For the record, that was Exhibit A2. Yes. Can I ask a quick question, just because I, I'm still not wrapping my head around what the parking ratio here is supposed to be. Um, the first floor of both buildings put together is the existing garage. So the f first floor of both buildings put together um, is the, the so the, the, the what, what I'll call the original building, which is on the uh, lot one, which is the more um, pie shaped lot mm -hmm. that is currently the auto repair use solely so there's three bay doors um, and there's the lobby and it, that's all it is on the second lot the 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 building that's there has both like storage and supplies uh, for the uh, 
auto repair use on the, on the, on the abutting lot, but it also has a, a, a use that is snap-on tools. And do you know what the other? There's two tenants. I know snap-on tools is one tenant. Do I don't know. Do we the have other. commercial use and occupancy uh, certificates for those uses? I, I don't know the answer to that. I think at this point, if the board is going to ask questions, particularly that we're going to need to have testimony on, maybe it's a good idea to have the witnesses sworn in so that they may be able to answer the questions. Sure. Well, well, well let's let Carl put on his case and then we'll ask questions, okay? So, so this is uh, Jim Miller. How you doing, Jim? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I know. And your full name for the record and the capacity in which you appear to me. You're the applicant or it's on Paul Miller, owner of uh, Miller Thanks. Go ahead, Paul. So um, those are the three the three items that we're asking for. Um, and you know, since he's been he's just been sworn, why don't I have uh, Jim come up and present some testimony? Jim, could you just uh, um, identify the the property that you're that you're the uh, equitable owner for? Yes. And that uh, purchase is contingent upon the the approval of the zoning relief. Yes. And if you were to not be able to uh, obtain the zoning relief requested tonight, would you able be able to uh, move forward with the project? Probably not. Okay. Now, um, can you just describe the improvements that you're planning to the property? Yeah, so as Carl explained, the, the, the first part of the business is at the Caracom Point. There's an there's a, a existing auto repair shop that has two bays, low ceilings. So we want to take that, make it a third bay, and then also perhaps use the bay on the right side, on Haverford side, for the auto repair shop as well, because you know, we're going to purchase that business too and keep it going. And what I would like to do is put a second floor on, move from Haverford Road down to there, and use the back warehouse for my business in the side yard. Uh, you know, there won't be a lot of trucks, and well, but you know, put my business there, my office staff, myself, my estimators, uh, work out of there. Yeah. So why don't you go into that a little bit? Do you, are you going to be storing any trucks on site? Uh, more than likely. Yes, I mean we'll keep you know we'll keep them either in the side yard or in there. But all of our guys take their trucks home, so if there's one or two spare trucks, I mean I guess you guys can see now on Haverford Road if you ride by, there's one black Nissan that's in the lot that's a spare truck. All the other ones are guys. And um, do you do retail sales out of the building? No, not really. So can you just describe what the daily activity would be for that? So use? it would just be you know. Uh, our service department would be there, sales, estimating. And how many employees do you expect to be there? Uh, probably eight. And okay. And uh, I'm, I'm, I've brought up onto the computer screen um, what is uh, A7 in the council or in the board's packets. Um, can you just describe what A7 is? So this is our proposed second floor layout that shows, you know, the offices, conference room, kitchen, uh, you know, <clears> IT, <throat> closets, you know, the office layout for the second floor. And it calls for how, seven offices? I think, yep. And um, at the, uh, at any one time, you don't expect more than 10 people in the building? Everybody's, you know, out there looking at stuff. We're always on the road back and forth. You know, on a rain day, yes, everybody could be there or, you know, other, but. And can you describe the current condition of the property? Yeah, it, it's in poor condition. It hasn't been touched for 40 years. It's tired. It's, you know, the roof's bad. Everything's bad. Everything's falling down. I mean, we, we're proposing, you know, we'll put a lot of money into it. I mean, dollars to. Paving sidewalks, uh, completely brand new. Yeah, so you're proposing to repave the entire lot, replace all the sidewalks. Yeah, everything. 
the Every, place everything brand new all the facades yes all everything gone you know with the second floor we would and i i think maybe but we would make all the elevations i'm working with a good architect so the, the front phase the ceilings would get raised a little bit so the whole building looks you know the same and you know uh so it, it's going to be nice and um have you had a chance to meet with some of the neighbors i have and uh, uh there are a number of letters uh, attached as exhibit number a9 yeah so all the you know all the neighbors are are in support you know all the businesses here behind me are the neighbors that are directly behind the building they, they wanna... right so if, if you refer to a2 um you, the you you met with nick and linda moroli who, who live on Haverford Road, uh, if you're looking, it's immediately to the east. Yeah. Um, and we do have Nick and uh, Linda here tonight, and uh, you had a chance to talk to them about their concerns of the existing I, use? I have. Yes, I have. They have quite a few. And you're committed to remediating yes. the, those issues that they've identified? I am. What so, um, do you want me to have them come up and tell you about them, or do you want me to have Jim tell you about them? Jim. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I guess the bottom line is, you know, <coughs> the existing business and the owner haven't been good neighbors. You know, it's a mess. There's tires. It's just, you know, constant trash. Just, you know, the, the building looks terrible. The trees are overgrown. I mean, if you guys drive by and take a look at it, it's, it's efficient. And it doesn't do anything to put up or doesn't seem to care about the neighbors. And there's a trailer squished yeah, in there behind a, the building? Yeah, a rotted trailer that's been there for 30 plus years, I would say. <clears throat> that, you know, um, it's just a mess. It's just, I don't know what else to say. And you're going to remove the we're trailer? We're going to clean it all up. Everything, yeah, we're going to redo the entire building. And remove all the tires that are stored there? All the tires. We don't, you know, everything. The other thing with Ed's business now, uh, he hasn't updated anything. So he has so much junk. He, hasn't done anything so we're gonna you know clean out the business everything's gonna be streamlined you know the tires today get picked up if anything there might be a few tires on the side or we'll put them in a cage whatever the, you know whatever these guys want uh you know but we're we're gonna keep it clean and just you know. and you saw the photos that were a3 did that d accurately depict what the conditions of the property were yes um and then I'm going to show you a document that's listed as A4. Is that an aerial of the building? It is. And, in, and the white line in the middle shows the weird way that the, the lot line is divided? Yes. yes. And I'm going to show you A5. Is A5 the existing elevations of the property? Yes. A6 is A6 the uh, proposed elevations after renovation. Yes. And um, now there's a side yard um, that's fenced in and used for storage currently. Yes. And uh, you uh, had your surveyor measure the the size of that side yard. I did. And he found that. Uh, excluding, th there was a small portion of it that's actually located on the neighbor's property. Yes. Uh, and excluding that portion, uh, it was about 2,000 square feet. Correct. Is that A8 you're referring to? Yes, I'm sorry, A8. And so the area depicted on A8 is, uh, how does that factor in? That's not part of the building, right? Right, but it is a part of the use. Third parcel or part of this lot two? Um, no, it, it's it's on lot two. Although, if you look uh, at what's displayed up, which is A two, you'll see that surveyor did discover there's a there's a, there's a sliver that's uh, uh, gone onto the adjoining property. Um, and you've talked to the existing owner. I, I have. He's fine. They it's been up for thirty years. The fence. So I had a conversation with him, you know, a week or so ago, and he's just, you know, it is what it is. Nothing. 
I'm sorry, that was for outdoor storage? Right, the storage yard. Um, and A9 is a group of letters. Those are letters that, you're, uh, that, that you um, obtained from <coughs> neighbors yes. in support of the application? Correct. Now, A10, um, A10 shows um, the calculations that you worked with the um, surveyor to create. Yes. Um, and it shows that... When you combine the the first floor, uh, the second floor, and the exterior lot, there's 7,349 square feet of current use. That's correct. And your proposed addition uh, adds um, 31 or 3,126 square feet to the to the second floor. Yes. Um, and then. A11, uh, you you worked with your surveyor to create a parking plan? Yes. And that shows that on, on the exterior of the property, it's possible to park uh, 25 uh, yes. cars? 25 vehicles. And you also have, could park uh, vehicles inside the building? Yes, inside, yeah, we could park. Mm -hmm. Each, uh, each one of the bays could hold at least one yeah, car. Exactly. Um, and then the, the warehouse can hold, has, has a roll-up door, you can store a vehicle in there. <clears throat> and and uh, your surveyor determined that you could also park four to five vehicles in the side yard if needed. Now, um, this proposed... Uh, expansion of the use all of the use is on the lot that it, the, the, the use currently exists on right yes um and that use is less than 50 percent of the seven thousand um three hundred and forty nine square feet of existing use yeah now um the building coverage uh you're not proposing Proposing any change to the to the size of the building coverage, no, not, not the and same with the yard, Correct. and the, the the height of the building is is shorter than the maximum required or allowed height in the district. Yes, and um, you there currently is a, a vegetated buffer between the two properties. Yes, but you're proposing to work with the neighbor and and create whatever kind of buffer that they would like yeah we we had some conversations about that. and <clears throat> if they want you to remove trees you'll remove trees and if they want you to put up a fence you'll put up a fence right. and um i think that's all the questions i or i'm sorry um just in the event that the, this is found not to be a, a, a non-conforming use that can be expanded, um, you'd be requesting a variance. And you saw the um, diagram that I handed up that was A12 that uh, showed the, the shapes of the lots. Yes. There, it, was that an accurate depiction of the shape yes. of the lots? Yes. And that's a very unique, weird shape. Yes. Um, and the lot line actually runs straight through the building. Yes. And um, you didn't create that, um, those lot shapes, did you? No. And the, um, you, the, the changes, the in improvements that you're proposing for this property, uh, they would improve the, the impact on the neighborhood? Absolutely. And uh, would it in any way harm the public health, safety, and welfare? No. And uh, if... The, the, the proposed use, you've designed that to be the minimum that you need in order to use the property? It, it is. Okay. That's all the questions I have for this witness. Thanks. Jim, wait, don't go anywhere. The board will help for you. Um, with regard to your Exhibit A9 and the letters from other businesses, did you talk to all the adjacent property owners? 
residential homeowners. Well, whoever's adjacent connected yeah, so we to your... went, We went everywhere we could knocking on doors and whoever answered, we asked them, we had the plans, we showed them. So the, the commercial people were easier. They were home. So but on, on Carrick, um, what businesses are adjacent to this property? Uh, I mean, the bowling the is across. Place, the, the mulch guy is right next door. Then you have the dog grooming place across the street. Peter. Did you talk to them? Uh, no, I did not. How about the mulch place? I did. I spoke with him because my fence is on his property a little bit. What's what's their <laughs> what's the name of their business? Do you know? And you talked to him, and he I was in that. favor of this? Yeah, very nice guy, yes. Uh, who, who are the current tenants at your, in your proposed building? My proposed building, where yeah. I'm at now? Yeah, I heard Carl yeah, so mention, like, uh, yeah, so Snap-on. Oh, yeah, so there's Snap-on tools, and there's other people there. I don't know who we, because I don't own the building yet. So Ed has just different people there. Are you going to keep those? There. I'm sorry. Are you going to keep those other tenants, or you're no. going to occupy the whole thing? We're going to occupy the whole That's thing. Right. Okay. That's all I have. Jessica. So it seems like from your testimony, Carl, that you are counting the outdoor storage as part of the non-conforming use area in determining the 50% expansion. Yes. Kelly, is that permissible to count non-building area? within the area of a non-conforming use? Well, um, outdoor storage is expressly prohibited in the zoning code. Um, so no, it's generally not included in floor area because it's not permitted. Okay. So in that case, the expansion that you're proposing is greater than 50% so, of uh, the existing non-conformity. The, the difference in this case is that this is a pre-existing non-conformity. So um, that, that's why the use and, and the storage yard is in conjunction with the existing use. So even though- Understood, but if the storage yard is expressly not allowed by the zoning code, whether or not it's a non-conformity, right, it's just a not allowed use. But right now, period. if you were to look in the R5 district, you could say the same thing for the for the uh, for the auto repair business. Correct, but that's building area, not right. But just outdoor storage. Uh, sorry, I had the definition here. Uh, the definition actually of um, Well, I had the definition, but um, if you turn, or if you look at the, um, <coughs> the, re the requirements of 182.802, uh, it says no such extension of a non-conforming use shall exceed 50% of the area of the lot and floor area of any buildings devoted to such use. So it includes both the area of the lot and the floor area. And that's uh, subsection uh, B one B. Okay, so then my next question would be um, the addition that's being built. 
does not comply with the required setbacks in the district. And while the existing building does not comply, I would assume that any addition would have to comply with the required setbacks on the second floor. So um, I, I don't know that the ordinance says that. I mean, in, in, in its existing condition, the, the, the set, there's no way to make this property comply with the setbacks without tearing down. Correct, the, the on the building. first floor, yes. Right. So uh, it, I, I don't. Th it doesn't. Say the, the you know the ordinance doesn't um, speak to floors. It just speaks to the actual setback. So if if the first floor violated it and there was no second floor, it would still be a violation. Um, so right now it's just a, an expansion of what the, the existing structure is. But the second floor could be built in such a way that it would comply with the setbacks and wouldn't be so close to the rear property, the rear residential property. Um, well, actually, that raises a weird question. Um, because what setback are you applying? Well, I mean, either the rear or the side yard setback, it does not comply. The, uh, let me just grab. The rear yard setback is 25 feet, and the side yard setback is 20 feet for a non-conforming use. I think. Or for a use by special exception. So in the, dis in the district, the side yard setback, I believe, is a minimum of eight feet for feet. a residential use for the side yard. And you're, I, I don't have a copy of the ordinance in front of me, but um, the, uh, the, the weird thing about this property is technically you have two front yards. Um, the front yard complies. Right. But then I don't think you have a rear yard, um, and arguably you have a side yard. Um, Kelly, uh, correct two me. Two side yards. Would you not have one rear yard and one side yard? Correct, yes. And one front yard. Two front yards. Right? Uh, a quarter property has two front yards, one side yard, one, one rear yard. So... Um, I'd be happy to, you know, write, you know, send in a brief on that because when I look at it, uh, I find your ordinance has a specific definition for what the what the side yards are on a corner lot, and it's it, it actually it, when I look at this, if if you look at the definition of rear yard, uh, the definition of rear yard requires it to be behind the rear of the building, but then the side, uh, the definition of, of um, side yard it, it requires it, it, you know, the, the way the definitions line up, you've essentially got a front yard and a side yard, and you've got another front yard and another side yard, but there is no rear boundary of this building. You, would you like to take, take a couple minute break and you could look for the definition that you're talking about? I don't want you to feel rushed. If, if you want for it. Well, let's do that. We'll, we'll take a two minute recess and chopping, please. Go off the record. And we're on. Go ahead, Carl. Uh, so, yeah, looking at the weird shape of this lot, um, it's hard to really determine that there is a, a rear yard, but you know, the with that side with, with the are we good or yes okay um, the when you look at site the site plan which is a two uh, the distance between the side yard and the neighboring residential property 
uh, is six, uh, 15.53 feet, uh, and the applicant would be willing to set back the second floor addition, the additional two and a half feet uh, to make it 18 feet. So Kelly, if this is a non-conforming use and the setbacks in R5 are eight feet for the side yard for a residential use, but 20 feet if it's a use by special exception, would the 20 feet apply for this lot? Yes, uh, and the reason being is because uh, gasoline stations and service stations have uh, were previously always permitted, only permitted by special exception. Okay. So then, you know, according to 182.802, the extension or enlargement of the non-conforming use is allowed as long as it conforms to the yard building coverage and height requirements of the district. So I would expect the second floor, while it's an extension of a non-conforming use, to comply with the side yard setbacks that are required for the lot. It would be the entire side yard, so you'd, you know, bring that over 20 feet, and wherever that intersects with the building, you can build in that area. It's 20 feet from your lot line. Right here. If it's if that's 20 feet, yes. Right. This is the so the, the eastern boundary of the building is where we're talking about. Correct. And yes. And then also in the rear yard down at Karakong to also draw a line that's 25 feet to just show that the addition doesn't impede on the rear yard. You know, it's about 17 feet where it's the closest, so it's probably not gonna overlap too much, but I think that should be shown on the plan. So the request is to? To show wherever the rear yard is in the back. I don't know where it's gonna end up because it's not measured. Right, but the, the, on the boundary. Oh, okay. Sorry, it's on the record because I'm not hearing it. Sorry, 25 feet from the boundary of, on the, on the um, eastern boundary and also on the southern boundary. So, and you're willing to comply with that? Yes. And then my next question is for the parking plan, Exhibit A11. So there is a section that shows some trees and bushes along the side yard, um, but it's not continuous across the site. And the zoning code does require a five foot planted buffer between any parking lot and a residential area, which may of your parking count. So this is the existing condition. Correct. And are these spaces striped currently? You said you were repaving, no, these, so it is a new parking lot. Right, okay. Well, it's, it's, it's not a new parking lot. It's, it's the repair of a, an existing parking lot. And there are currently seven spaces striped in that location? There's, there's no striping on the lot currently. Kelly? For um, a parking lot that's existing like this that doesn't meet the current buffering requirements, if that's being repaved and restriped, does that need to be brought up to code? It would not be just for that reason. Okay. I just, just to repave and restripe, it would not okay. need uh, to meet the design standards. If it were expanded or um, if there are other land development activities on the lot, then yes. Well, when you say expanded, you mean expanded non-conforming use? Um, I meant the the part uh, the parking lot uh, itself, but um, but possibly. <laughs> but the zoning code um, says that an existing business that doesn't meet the design standards is permitted to remain, unless actually, uh, you know what? Come to think of it, I think I think the language does say unless there's a substantial expansion. Sorry, bear with me. Yeah, well, while you're looking, 
182-802-B doesn't talk about the substantial nature. It just says an enlargement of nonconforming use triggers certain limitations. Mm -hmm. And C, which I think, Jess, you're, you're looking at that, right? Correct. Which that the extension authorized in accordance shall conform that that to any buffer screen, off street parking, or other provisions of this chapter applicable to such district. Yes. Right, but the, that I think that's what um, Ms. Vitali was speaking of with the second floor. But there's no changes proposed to the parking lot except for repairing and, and making it better. There's, they're not changing the size or the shape or, or the location of any of the parking lot. So how do you put the five foot buffer in? When you go into the uh, northern edge of that parking area. So it's, a, it's grandfathered. You don't fit the five foot buffer in. Grandfathered if you don't extend the non-conforming. So the extension of the non-conforming use doesn't uh, change the other the other non-conformities it's a question of you know the, where, where here it says the extension authorized should the extension shall conform to the yard building coverage and height requirements it doesn't say the existing property must then be brought into compliance with all of the other uh, dimensional requirements. It doesn't require that you dig up something or just demolish something that currently exists. So there's so two things um, for the design standards question, uh, 182, 718, B, three, uh, any existing business or use affected by these regulations at the time of passage of this chapter shall not be required to comply with the above screening requirements except in the case of the enlargement or major alteration of such business or use. Uh, similarly, any district boundary change after the passage of this chapter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so whether the board you know, feels that this is um, an enlargement or major, major alteration of such business or use um, would depend on whether the buffer requirements uh, in the design standards of 182, 718 are applicable. Um, with the non-conforming use, 182, 802. Uh, 802 B, enlargement of a non-conforming use building or structure. Uh, da, 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 B. Three, um, if a building or structure is conforming as to use, but non-conforming as to area and bulk regulations or off-street parking requirements, that building or structure may be enlarged or added to, provided that the enlargement or addition. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm um, Building or structure may be. Uh, may be enlarged or added to, provided that the enlargement or, or addition complies with the area and bulk regulations and the existing building and any addition complies with the off-street parking regulations of the district in which said building or structure is located. So not only is this building non-conforming is to area and bulk, but it's also a non-conforming use. So that section doesn't necessarily apply, especially if we're not complying with the setback regulations on the second floor as well. Which, which section, Kelly, are you talking about? Doesn't. Oh, sorry, that was 20. 182-802-B3. I think um, if, if this is all about a five-foot uh, planted buffer, 
uh, Mr. Miller has testified that he's willing to create, you know, whatever buffer uh, the neighbors want on that. Um, and if the, the board, you know, requires a five foot buffer, uh, then he'll create a five foot buffer. Okay, thank you. And then my last question is just, have you done any parking calculations for the site to determine how many spaces are required? So uh, the ordinance itself is rather um, unclear. Uh, when you take a look at the ordinance, uh, it's, it says for a um, auto repair use, you need one, or you need two spaces for every 200 square feet of use that's dedicated to the repair, service, or sale of uh, vehicles. And there's no sales going on here. I'm not sure what the difference is between service and repair. Uh, and I think really there's just repair going on in this. But um, if you think about two spaces for every 200 square feet uh, of area dedicated to the repair, that makes sense if it covers the actual space in the bays, uh, which are being used to repair the vehicles. Um, but if it covers every square foot of the building, including toilets and you know, break room and whatever, um, it comes to this absurd result where this property would require 100 parking spaces uh, for, to, in order to have a, a, an auto repair use here. Uh, How many square feet is the building? So the building is that's four being used for the public garage or for the service station. Uh, so the whole building is four thousand nine hundred and forty-nine uh, square feet, and then um, roughly, or here, the that's, that's all on one floor. That's all. Well, that's the footprint. That's the first that, floor, yes. But lot one is a one-story building. Yes. So um, lot one, the building portion that's on lot one is 2,393 square feet. So uh, for just lot one, that would require uh, 48 parking spaces uh, if you interpreted it to be the entire uh, the entire floor area of the entire building. Um, it would just be 12 spaces, because it's 200 square feet into 2,000. It's two per 200, right? Which it's is two per 200. Which is one 200. per okay, 100. I'm oh, sorry, so it's the 24th then. Right. Um, and then the other, the other building is 2,556 on the first floor and approximately 400 on the second floor. But the proposal, to increase the second floor to 3,500 square feet. Correct. And how many spaces would that require for the office? Well, so here's here's the issue. The, uh, the zoning ordinance um, does not provide for uh, a con the parking for the contractor use. Uh, the, but the what about for the office use? Well, the the office use, but this see that that's the thing. This is, you know, that would require you to divide the the use. Now you're saying that it's not it's not one use on the property. It's two uses on the property. It does have a requirement of one space for every 200 square feet of office. Um, but this the use that we're proposing is the contractor shop you know, roofing use, uh, and there is no requirement under that, uh, and your ordinance says that where, there, where the exact use is not listed, uh, then the standard is one for every thousand square feet. Kelly, when you do the parking calculations, typically, even if there, if, if it's one business, if there are two use components of that business, the parking would be per use component, correct? 
Correct. We all we often, um, especially in cases like this where there's a large office area and in, in addition to a large warehousing area, um, split the uses to make the parking ratio uh, make more sense uh, because obviously you're not going to apply 200 square, uh, you know, one space per 200 square feet of a warehouse area. Um, but also it wouldn't make sense in the reverse of that to use, you know, 1,000 square feet per the office area. So, um, so yes, that's often. So ultimately, it's a, a situation where the property can't meet the, uh, the the parking requirements. But I don't see a variance for parking in the application. There, there is a request for a variance for parking. We requested variances in the event that it was found to be not compliant. It says, to the extent the board determines the application does not meet the standards for expansion or change of non conforming use, the applicant requests in the alternative that the three alterations be approved as a variance. Would a separate variance need to be advertised for parking, Kelly? I think that might not be a question for me, but for your solicitor. I mean, ultimately, <laughs> the question that you're presenting is, do you deny the, the non-expanding use because it, or the, the, the non-conforming, the expansion of the non-conforming use because you, you find that it doesn't have the parking? That means that we included in our request the you know, to the extent that you determine it doesn't meet the standards for expansion, we were requesting a variance. And um, Ernie's going to look into that and look at read the application more closely, Jess. And okay. I guess it would be more helpful too if there was an actual calculation of the service area for the garage because it might be that there is no relief needed, but we don't actually have because you only need two spaces for the floor area devoted to repair, which we don't have. Um, we just have the area of the entire garage. So I think an actual in-depth parking calculation would be helpful in this case. Well, for just for discussion purposes, if we assume that, that there is 24 parking spaces required for the garage, um, so it would appear that we would need three parking spaces for the ground floor of lot two, and uh, 18 spaces for the proposed second floor office. I'm, I'm just, this is a question. Uh, I'm just doing a rough calculation, right? 18, 24 for lot one, um, three for the ground floor of lot two, and 18 for the second floor of lot two. I came up with the same math. Which is a total of 43? 43. 43. Still on the road. And could you yes. just explain what you just explained to me to the board? So the actual work areas. Oh, sorry. The, the, uh, 
the actual work areas are going to be about 350 square foot each. So each bay is about 14 foot wide and about 25 foot deep. That's where a lift would be. Is that what's considered I think shop be, space? I think it would be anything that's uh, where work is being done, maybe not a bathroom, but a break room. Yeah, so. I, it's going to, I would presume, you know, integral and ancillary to the operation of the business. Um, sometimes we look at areas that, you know, no member of the public brings a car in because it's it's private bathroom only or, you, yeah. know, um, you know, something like that. And so, but we usually, usually the applicant tells us that hey, yeah. here's the, the customer area or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, so in the front, the three bays, there's two bays now, if we propose three, they're 14 foot wide doors. So when you pull a vehicle in, it would be a 14 foot wide by 25 foot deep workspace. So there would be three of those. Well, I think usually you see it by subtraction rather than taking the narrowest one because yeah. you've got tools, you've got spare parts, you've right. got other things that are all integral, I think, to the service of the vehicles, I presume, that are maybe not sitting in that right under the lift. Right. And maybe adjacent. So you end up, I think, having to look at it fairly, a little bit more expansively. Okay. You know, so, how, so what's the space that the car is so, taking up? So if the building's 5,000 square feet and I'm taking half of it for my shop and leaving the existing, so that's basically what we're doing. So I'm splitting the building in half. The roofing company's gonna take half for warehouse space and the, ex the other half is gonna be the existing repair shop. So that's gonna be 2,500 square feet. Off, yeah. Well, it's gonna be 2,500 square foot to, total, to, less the offices and. Sorry, you have to calculate parking for all three phases of this building. Right. And it seems to me that you might have the most opportunity to find space that's not available for the repair of vehicles in the garage, not one, because it's, you know, a manager's office or it's a bathroom or a break room. Right. Um, and that is the one that has, yeah, the highest amount of parking one per every 100 square feet, right? So, you know, you, you could probably, I would presume you might be able to find some room that's not that or to, I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know. Do you have, you have floor diagrams or something with you? If we, uh, if you wanted to sit down and calculate the spaces, you think, you you need under the code is that something you think you do now carl tonight yeah uh <clears throat> no we're pro probably not right i mean maybe we we know we know what the second floor is figure out you know. well yeah they've already told you they were going to require 18 for the second floor and three for the warehouse right. um right. No, no, that that's not what we are going to require we're trying to determine what what is required under the code and how many you can provide and what the difference is um, I, I think that's what people are getting at their questions yeah so <clears throat> we know what you can provide so if you calculate what you think you're required to have uh, now the board members calculated a number right uh, but but it's not your number. so if you think there's some mitigating uh, explanation, for example, within the car repair shop, <clears throat> if, if there's an area designated for parts storage, maybe that doesn't fit into the hundred, one per hundred square foot calculation, you know what I mean? So if, if you think that's something you could do now, then we would break, <clears throat> talk to Ernie about the uh, parking variance uh, that you may need within this application. And while we're doing that, you could calculate the parking, but it's it's up to you. We'll we'll see if we can do that. You want to give it a shot? Yeah, sure. Okay. <clears throat> Before we break, could we, yep. could you? St I don't know if we've even stated yet on the record how many spaces you're showing. I know it's it, you, you pointed to a parking diagram, but could you actually just um, go run through that really quickly? So A11 shows 25 parking spaces. There's um,
There's seven parking spaces along the eastern boundary. There's two in, in, on the northern wall. Uh, there's seven and four parked on, uh, within the, the <coughs> triangle in front of uh, the... So it's seven and four, not six and six? To... I have seven and four specifically yep. written. Okay. Um, How many spots? <coughs> oh, I got you. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Seven and four. I got it. Okay. Uh, there's three on the <coughs> southern wall of the original building, and then there's two more on the southern wall uh, of the, um, where the, the, the addition building. Um, there was, they're not pictured here, um, but the, uh, the, the surveyor said that there could be, that there's four spaces that could be put within the storage yard um, along this 18 inch stone retaining wall. Um, and then of course, uh, in each one of the bays, uh, you can, you can uh, park a vehicle. So that's four additional. So I think that's a, a total of 33. Uh, and then there's an additional um, opportunity to, to park a vehicle within the uh, warehouse. So be when you say along the retaining wall, that, that area is currently not paved, correct? It is paved. It is. Everything's paved now. Okay. Did, uh, Kelly, the, the parking requirements, do they include indoor parking? Um, specifically, if we use the ratio for, coincidentally, uh, service shops and repair shops, it does allow for the bays to be counted <coughs> toward your parking ratio. If we, we apply a different parking ratio, then you don't have that opportunity. So, um, so we could include the bays, yes. which you're saying there would be four bays for the garage, but not parking in the warehouse? Is there not service space? If it were a garage um, and it were to be used as a garage um, on it in the same way, and and there was, you were able to maneuver uh, to and like the car and the, the vehicle um, in and out of the garage without stacked parking or causing any sort of, you know, issue with blocking them. Um, we, we could count that, just in the same way that we would count somebody's garage in their house. Got it. So did we land on 33 or 34? Well, that's what they're going to calculate. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I think it's 34. I, I mean... Just like at your home, you have a garage that's inside, that counts as a parking space. You know, it's, it's designed for vehicles to be pulled into. Uh, you know, it, it's got a bay door that's specifically there for vehicles. And you were counting that as one? I, I was only counting that as one. I mean, I, I think there's ways you could finagle it, but. So there's 34. And, and you may have questions about this, but what, what Carl's saying is there are 34 spaces provided. So what you need, what we would like to know is how many are required. And, and they're going to work on, we're in recess for five minutes or 10 minutes, whatever time you need. Off the record. We're on. Okay. Carl, were you guys able to work up some parking? Yeah, so actually, I think we found a way <clears throat> to make it. Uh, work for now. Um, I, I have uh, what is A2, and we yes. mark it up a little bit. Um, the front uh, original facade of the service station, um, we are we're proposing to put three bays in. Mm -hmm. um, Jim calculated out those bays. You know, the doors can, can be accommodated 12 feet wide, um, leaving an eight foot wide. Office and then the vote 
40 feet wide, 29.5 feet deep uh, to, the, to the service use. Um, he's proposing that he can take out this rear bay and use that for the storage and warehouse use. Um, and uh, that leaves uh, for the base 20 by two. It's roughly 1,200. Uh, it's 11, 1,180 1, square feet, uh, which would require um, the 12 parking spaces. Uh, the office storage is 236 square feet, so that would require an additional parking space. Uh, and then that, the remainder uh, would be 3533, require four parking spaces under the warehouse use. And as you calculated 17 at the top, that, that actually provides for 34 parking spaces, which as we've discussed, we actually already have. 25 on the macadam, um, four, or three in the storage bays, one in each garage, uh, and <coughs> four along the rear uh, retaining wall in the storage yard. Um, we would ask, that, we don't believe that this is actually, uh, this number of spaces would be necessary um, in the real practical uh, you know, day to day of this building. If you actually look at the proposed addition, um, it specifically identifies for each office, even the individual person. Uh, you know, Jim, this is Jim's office here, and Nicole, and Paul, and Jim V, and Jack, uh, you know, and the service, the service guy. And Steve L, you know, so we've got seven offices here, one for potential future expansion. I mean, that's eight people who are coming in and out of this office building or this office section of the building uh, at, on any day. Uh, and, you know, for the most part, these people aren't even here uh, at, at one time. The service department's typically out doing service. You know, um, the, I mean, the crazy. Yeah, so the other guys are asking. Yeah, they're out in the field there. Yeah, they're out measuring roofs, and then they come back and create create an estimate. Um, so uh, we would request that while we have space available in that storage yard, it not be required to be set aside you know, unless in so, at some point in the future um, it was shown that the the parking was inadequate and we needed those four extra spaces. Um, Carl, that that that's hard to manage, right? That. If it's shown, shown by whom, determined by whom, when is it determined? You know, do we have to send code enforcement out to start counting how many cars are back there? If, if we were inclined to approve this, I think we'd be probably inclined to give you a number, a minimum number of striped, identified, numbered lots assigned to each of the two businesses. Mm -hmm. So there was pure, you know, real clarity on that. Okay. Um, Jim, you've heard everything that I've said here and you've heard what I said previously when I was discussing this project with the board. Um, are the, did you agree with, or do you, do you think that I've stated things accurately? Is there anything that you would change? Um, and we do have the neighbor here to testify about their um, experience with the property and their support for the project. Are, are you going to call them as a witness? Or, because otherwise I'll call them to bring their public input, which will be true. But um, I'll call them as a witness just okay. to get them on the record. 
Who's first? Uh, I don't think I need both of them unless you want to speak with both of them. Your witness, your, your, but. Uh, do you want to just uh, identify who, or she has to be sworn? Yeah. Sorry. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Oh. Yes. yes I do. And what's your full? I wasn't even paying attention. Oh, sorry. Now I have to do it again because you said that. Okay. Do, do you, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole <laughs> truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. And your full name and address for the record, please? Linda A. Maroli, 2220 Haverford Road, and right next door. Along well, along the buffer side, M I R O L L I. So you're along the eastern boundary here, the immediate yes. neighbor. Yes. Okay. In between that, yeah, the 15 feet that they're talking about, that whole. And um, you had a chance to walk the property with Mr. Miller. Yes. And uh, could you just describe what the current condition of the property is? It's a disgrace to the neighborhood, that's what I think, because my house starts the residential section uh, going up Haverford Road on the other, and we're all single houses, and on the other side of the Haverford Road is twin homes. They're all kept up very nice, and this service station has gone, I've lived in my house, my husband and I, uh, we bought it 45 years ago, and um, in, we had no problems, and, and then it just started going in disrepair. And I've been in contact um, with the codes department. First, I started out with my com uh, commissioner, my uh, six ward commissioner, and uh, I waited weeks for him because uh, I had a problem with the tires. And if you just these were our pictures. Side, they right. had the uh, so. So, Linda, because you're handing these pictures, can I keep these? You can, yeah. And Carl, did you see these? Yes, I've seen them. So, they need to be marked as exhibits. So, let's make them A13. M, M for Morelli, M1 and M2. And so I M, M1 is a photograph. Is this the side of the auto repair shop? What, what, just, just give me a quick description of what this, what these photos depict, Linda, if you would. They, they depict the, the, can you explain it better, honey? What they, it's, no. it's a bunch of tires that they don't pick up, and, it's, and it looks terrible, and it's along Haverford Road, and it's a, my side of the uh, house. And I've asked them nicely to pick it up, and they said, well, it's, well, when I called the codes department, they said, oh, it's once a month. So I had to be my responsibility to constantly call the codes department and say, they're not picked up. Um, first, they were in a lump looking like that. They, they said, okay, they told Ed that it had to be on a pallet and stock. So they did that. And then they also said, okay, well, they have to be covered. He never covered them. So, <coughs> Uh, besides seeing the tires, they put trash out there. Chairs, whatever, I don't know, their employees or whoever, whatever they want to throw away is dumped over there until the trash man comes and gets it. Uh, but I've, I've told the uh, codes department, I think it's, it's, it's terrible for our street. It looks horrible. And... Um, so and, uh, I, I've spoke to Joe do, Celia. Do they I'm ever do they there. ever clean it up? No. It, like when the township comes out, do they take the tires away and then it's clean for a month? No, he hires somebody to get the tires once a month, uh, but it wasn't always once a month. So that was me calling them, the township, all the time because I would go over to Ed and say, you know, it's with the water laying in the tires and all the mosquitoes and. It, it, it Agree was just with a you a thousand thing. percent. It should never have happened. Right. So how do you but think? But it was always my responsibility. How do you think uh, Mr. Miller's proposal it's, will affect? It's going to look beautiful. I can't wait. I can't wait. He, and, and he's I not going to have the tires there. He said he would put them on the other side on Caracon Road, so they're not even on Haverford. And then if he did keep them on Haverford, he would put them in a storage container so he wouldn't see them. Right now. 
in between that 15 foot area is this big trailer. I have a picture of it. How that was allowed, I don't know. And the codes director saw that. I'm staring at a big, ugly looking trailer uh, right next to you know my property. Um, and so to did, talk did about- Mr., Did Mr. Miller indicate what he intended? He's gonna get rid of it. Or, or yeah, it's not gonna be there. So, I mean, right now for parking spaces, the cars are parked all over the place. It's a service station. It's been a, it's been a repair place for the last, you know, was started as a gas station, which was kept up very nice and clean. Um, and then, and then it uh, was the service station. And so cars are all over the place. There are, you can park along Haverford Road in front of, you know, my house and all the way up, uh, but they're, they're mishmash all over the place. There are no lines. He's gonna, um, you know, completely resurface. It's gonna look beautiful. He said he was even gonna do the sidewalks. So. I, mean, no, no I need to spray you in it. I'm Let's talk, come on up. What? Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, how have you got? I do. And your full name and address for the record? Nicholas Moroli, same as hers, 2220 Haverford Road. Or more. Okay. I just want to say to me, this is a no-brainer, because all he's going to do is enhance this whole property, and 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 the and the uh, the, res the residents and, and the neighborhood around it. As you can see from the photos, it, it's a pigsty. It's always been a pigsty. We've gone, we've butted heads many times. That's why I got my wife to go and try to do it more diplomatic way, because I was I was not into that. You know, you were man to man. Oh yeah, he says he he makes jokes in front of uh, customers about what it looks like when I when I go there. You know, so anything that he does is going to be 100% improvement to the property and to that whole area, really. So if, if you see, he never picks up leaves. He, he's got stuff. It's just a, it's terrible to live next to. But the guy before him was the son-in-law of the owner of the built a bowling alley, built my house, built that whole four of those single homes there. And it was, the guy kept everything up. Everything was nice, shoveled, weed whacked, everything. And this guy comes along and, you know, he's living in Newtown Square, so he doesn't give a crap about what's going on in Haverford. So whatever you guys, if, if you have to make a little bit of a, of, of, of a sway one way or the other, I implore you to make it so he gets this property done because it's, it's going to be a godsend for us, really. I feel bad that Thank you. didn't take any pictures of the trailer. Those trees, my property is right over Back there. Here. That's the trailer. Yeah. And then the tires would be, now that's, they got picked up there. But the trailer, the tires would be right in there. And that trash can is always overflowing with the trash and the other debris. But, um, and the trees have gone over top of the trailer on the street. Does anybody have any questions for Linda or Nicholas? Yes, Ed? No. Jesse, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question to Mr. Miller? No, yeah, wait one second. Bill, do you have a question for Linda? I, or just Nicholas? one question. Um, the the on-street parking in front of your house around the existing service area, um, is it particularly difficult to find an on-street spot? Um, is there, do you it's find fine. ample parking in your neighborhood? Yes, yeah, it's fine, yes. The only people that are parking Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Miller. Jim. Yes. You heard uh, Ms. Morelli's uh, testimony. Um, do you, would you, if we were inclined to grant uh, approval, would you accept a condition that you would have a storage container for the tires? Yes. And would you uh, also accept a condition that the trailer will be removed? Absolutely. Okay. No other questions. Anything else? Any other questions, Jess? No. Ed? Uh, no questions. Bill? Yeah, I, I had one question. Um, the depiction um, on 
A3, I guess. Um, I'm sorry, uh, A5 of the second story edition. Um, to the extent it's facing out towards the peninsula, towards the uh, corner, that upstairs edition is going to be uh, built over the property line? No. Um. What, the prop, I, I'm talking about the, the jagged yeah, the line between, between lot, yeah. the parcels. That, that, that's not the property line run right through the second story addition? It does. Yeah, yes. okay. And is there, have you given consideration to consolidating these two because you're building a second story on top of two different parcels? I have not, just because I'm trying to get, I mean, it's something I would certainly be inclined to do. You, you would, it, that, doing that might be amenable to you? Yes. To just consolidate them into one, yeah, one parcel? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No other questions. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> you have anything else, Carl? I don't have any other witnesses, no. You want your exhibits admitted, right? They're admitted. Correct. We'd ask that exhibits A1 through A12 be admitted. A, yeah. yeah, A12. A13, I'm sorry. I think you would, you, you made something A13? Or? A1 through A12 and then M1 and Oh, M1 and M2, yes. M1 and M2 are admitted. I agree with myself. Okay. Any other questions? Is there any reason to leave the record open? I, I, I had a couple of questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. Where would the dumpsters be located? I think they're I think they're right now on Haverford Roadside. So, yeah, right now there's one on the Haverford Roadside. Right? Uh, I really haven't thought about that yet, but they would be you know out of the way. So, so you would accept a condition that they would be screened. What do you mean by so, screened? Uh, like behind a fence? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Chid, uh, are you planning to uh, a, a decent plant buffer, so it, if this was approved, so the Morales don't have to, like, look at, I mean, some of it's necessary, right? What the current owner does with those tires and the water that sits in those, I mean, that, yeah, that's that, hazard. Yeah, that's, that's not that's not. So uh, you're, you're not going to do that, but I, I don't even want them to have to really look at that. If there's a way you can put some screening up, like some okay. evergreens or something. We had you know. a long conversation yeah. with the whatever you want, you know, we'll put up a wall, a fence, you know, whatever they want, they're going to get. And one, one thing we didn't touch on was the roof deck that's proposed. Could you just give a general description of how you plan to use it and what might be yeah, on the roof really deck? Just for employees, you know, on a nice day, just come out. Do you plan on some, some furniture, air. some like yeah, umbrellas or nice, you know, this is really just conceptual it's going to be you know uh, similar to that but yeah you don't plan to hold like events or loud music or anything like that no okay <laughs> so it would just be would it be just used for during business hours yes okay. any um, permanent utilities out there besides electric like you're not gonna yes. have like gas you wanna, oh no 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 not upstairs no no yeah just electric just electric okay no other question so uh, Carl uh, it's my understanding. Do you need when do you need a decision in this case? I mean, he's running up against the the contingency date. Um, I, it is once you when, when does it expire? I don't have it. From is that in the agreement of sale? Everybody it's in the agreement of sale, but it's. Yeah. I think we're already in an extension period. I couldn't actually find it. What was in the exhibit, Carl? I don't we, know we are on another yeah. extension. I think we're supposed to, if it goes through, we're supposed to settle by for the first of the year. Does that timeline include your land development approvals as well? No, the, it's not contingent upon, we, what do you mean by land development? By consolidating two lots? Or? No, I mean by the, the land development approval for the... Oh, for the second story? No, no. The, No, we couldn't get land development in 28 days.
And the reason I'm asking is we generally do not do decisions the same night that we hear a case. Yeah. But uh, if we don't do this decision tonight, we do it until real close to your, what I thought I read was your expiration date. Two weeks or 30 days. So if you're going to request that we do one tonight because of that reason, then we'll, we'll go in the, in the back and ask whatever questions we remain for Ernie and uh, do a decision tonight. So do you need one tonight? I guess that's... I, I think it would be appreciated if you could. But, um, we, I mean, we, it's 90 days from the date of the agreement, which the, the agreement was back. And then... The agreement was July 20th, so um, we're already on our second extension on it. All right. I'm, I'm, what I'm going to do, it, you're going to stay, right? Yeah, like yeah. The Morolis, they don't have to stay. They, they can go. But I'm going to leave the record open, okay? And we're going to do this as a recess just in case some other question comes up when we're, we're talking. So I'm going to leave the record open. Uh, and then we'll come out if we reach a decision. We'll, we'll close the record and then we'll do the decision. So before I do that, I'm going to go through the litany and ask if there's anyone present that received certified mail that wishes to testify. Anyone present that received regular mail? Any other resident of Hartford Township? With that, we're in recess. And we're on. Okay. Uh, we'll reconvene the meeting. Uh, are there any additional questions? Jessica? No. Ed? Uh, no questions. Bill? No, thank you. Jesse? No. Uh, anything else you wanted to add, Carl? No. All right. With that, we'll close the record on this case. I'll ask, are you prepared to vote, Jessica? I am. Ed? Yes. Bill? Yes. Jesse? Yes. And so am I. Jesse, would you please take this decision? Yes, I will. Uh, with regards to case Z22-28, I would vote to deny the special exception request set forth in the application. In the alternative, I would vote to grant the following variances. One, use variance from section 182-207-B for use as an auto repair and office space with accessory warehouse and storage use. Two, dimensional variance from 182-207-D and 182-707 by which there shall be no fewer than 24 parking spaces on site. And with the following conditions. One, there shall be use by no more than two businesses on the premises. Two, the parking spaces shall be striped and identified per business. Three, no overnight parking of commercial vehicles outside. Four, no outdoor storage, including tire storage. Five, removal of existing storage trailer. Six, dumpsters shall be screened per township requirements. Seven, the proposed second floor addition must conform with all building setbacks of the district. Eight, landscape buffering and screening shall be provided to the satisfaction of the adjoining neighbors at 2220 Haverford Road. Nine, uh, the project shall be completed within one year of this approval and in accordance with the notes of testimony. Okay, so uh, I just wanna make sure the consolidation. Um, yeah, that was the point. I was supposed to be there too. Yeah. yeah. So I would propose that there be an additional condition that the applicant will uh, consolidate the two parcels into one parcel of record uh, in the uh, land records of the county. I would accept that uh, condition. And Jesse, did. Did you name the two types of businesses? I only have one. Yes. Auto repair and office space with accessory warehouse and storage use. Office with accessory warehouse. Okay. Jessica? I agree, and I Ed? agree with Bill's addition as well. A very difficult site with a lot of restrictions, but I concur with it. I agree with you on that one, Ed. Bill? Just for the record, I uh, agree with the additional condition that I proposed. <laughs> well, he amended his decision. Yeah, yeah. so I agree. Okay, and so do I. That application is approved. Those conditions, 5-0.
Any other business? Yes. We have minutes. Yep. Yep. Uh, Minutes uh, from November 17th, 2022 were distributed. I'd like to make a motion that we approve these minutes as distributed. I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any other business? Okay, we are adjourned. <laughs>